Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Acrobat's Quick Tools Toolbar contains several buttons that provide commands for creating, saving, exporting, and editing PDF files. To the far left of the Quick Tools Toolbar is the Create button. When clicked, the Create button will open a drop-down menu that you can use to begin the process of creating a new PDF. Users can choose to create a PDF from a file on the computer's hard drive or clipboard, from a scanned document, or even from a web page. The Create button also contains commands for combining several files into one PDF, as well as commands for creating forms and PDF portfolios. To the right of the Create button is the Open File button. Clicking this button will launch the Open dialog box where you can navigate to find the PDF file you want to open. To the right of the Open File button is the Save File button. When clicked, this button will save changes made to the PDF document. If you are saving a PDF document for the first time, the Save File button will instead launch the Save As dialog box which will prompt you to name your file and choose a location for your file to be saved. To the right of the Save File button is a button that looks like a cloud with a green upward pointing arrow on top of it. This button allows you to save files to Acrobat.com so that you can access them from any computer that has an internet connection. In order to access Acrobat's cloud features, users must first create a free profile on Acrobat.com. Just to the right of the Acrobat Cloud button is the Print File button. Clicking this button will launch the Print dialog box where you can choose print preferences. To the right of the Print File button is the Sign button, and clicking this button is a quick way to expand the Sign task pane to the right, where you will find commands related to adding or soliciting digital signatures to PDFs. To the right of the Sign button is a button that looks like an envelope. This is the Send Email button. Clicking it will launch the Send Email dialog box, which contains commands for sending your current file as an email attachment. To the right of the Send Email button is a thin vertical line that doesn't react when you hover over it and cannot be clicked. This line is known as a divider, and its function is purely organizational. Dividers separate different groups of buttons within a toolbar. To the right of the divider is the Edit Current Toolset button. When clicked, this button will launch the Edit Toolset dialog box, which allows you to customize the buttons within your currently selected toolset. To the right of the Edit Toolset button is the Add Sticky Note button, which lets you add comments to a PDF. To the right of that is the Highlight Text button, which allows you to apply highlighting to selected text in a PDF. The button next to the right is the Delete Page button, which allows you to delete a page or a range of pages from a PDF. To the right of the Delete Page button is the Rotate Page button, which launches the Rotate Pages dialog box. To the right of that is the Insert Page from Another File button, which does what its name suggests by launching the Select File to Insert dialog box. The final button in this group is the Edit Text and Images button. When you click it, the Content Editing panel will be expanded in the Tools pane and you'll be able to find basic tools for editing PDFs. Now notice that when you hover the mouse pointer over different buttons within the Quick Tools toolbar, different screen tips are displayed. Some of these screen tips include keyboard shortcuts. Also, notice a lot of blank space to the right of the button groupings in the Quick Tools toolbar. When you customize this toolbar, the specific features and commands that you want to be able to access quickly will be added to this blank area as new buttons. We'll examine how to customize the Quick Tools toolbar in a future lesson. At the right side of the Quick Tools toolbar is the Customize button. When you click it, you'll see a drop-down menu that contains commands for customizing tool sets. At the far right end of the Quick Tools toolbar, you'll see the View File in Read Mode button. When you click it, the toolbars and task panes disappear and the open PDF is resized to fill the entire window. 
You'll notice that a semi-transparent floating toolbar appears at the bottom of the document when you move your mouse over that area. To exit read mode, click the house-shaped show main toolbar button within the semi-transparent toolbar to return the workspace to its former appearance. Now let's take a look at the Common Tools toolbar. This toolbar, found immediately under the Quick Tools toolbar, provides navigation buttons. At the far left, the first buttons are Show Previous Page and Show Next Page. To the right of those two buttons, you'll see a white text box followed by a slash and a number. The number is the total number of pages in the open PDF file. By clicking into the white text box, you can enter a number using your keyboard and jump immediately to that page when you then press the Enter key on your keyboard. This can be very handy when you want to jump to a specific page in a very long PDF. You can just enter the page number without having to click or scroll through a lot of PDF pages. Just to the right of the total number of pages in the PDF is Acrobat's selection tool. This is Acrobat's default tool, which means that it's the active tool when you first open the program. To the right of the selection tool, you'll see a button with a hand on it. This is commonly referred to as the hand tool, and clicking this button allows you to pan around a page when it is magnified. Just to the right of the hand tool are several different zoom tools. First are two buttons with a plus and minus symbol on them. Clicking these buttons will allow you to zoom in and out of a page within the PDF. Just to the right of those buttons is another text box with a drop-down menu on it. This is another zoom tool and you can use it in a couple of different ways. You can click the downward pointing arrow to the right of the magnification percentage which will open a drop-down menu of magnification percentage choices. You can also click and drag to highlight the number in the white text box and replace the existing value with your own value by using the keyboard. This can be handy if you want to see your PDF at a specific zoom level. For example, if you highlight this value and replace it with the number 25 and then hit the Enter key on your keyboard, you can see that the PDF is displayed at 25%. To the right of the Zoom drop-down menu is the Fit to Window Width button and the Fit One Full Page to Window button. When you use these different zoom commands, you're not changing the file size or any aspect of your PDF. Zoom tools only change the way that your open PDF file appears on screen. If your application window is maximized, then after the zoom buttons in the Common Tools toolbar is a large blank area. This area is where some command buttons that correspond to menu bar command sets may appear if you customize the toolbar to add buttons for those commands. You'll learn how to customize the toolbar in a later lesson. At the far right end of the Common Tools toolbar, you'll see the buttons that expand Acrobat's primary task pane. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.